Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of the Oxford United Save. We're back today for our first game in the Championship. So if you haven't seen the most recent episode and you're not wanting the spoiler, I've already given it to you. We won the league, we won League One, and we are into the Championship for the new season. We are starting the season today against Stoke City away from home. And then the second game, which we won't be doing on the video, we've got Bolton one of the teams that came up with us. As it stands, we are predicted to survive relegation as we're currently predicted to finish 20th in the league. So hopefully that is a sign of things to come. Let's go and have a look at the transfers that have made that possible. We'll start off with the sales. We sold Niall Huggins for £275,000 to Preston and Cameron Humphreys to Birmingham for £350,000. And then Sidi Salo went to Real Valladolid for 650,000. There's still a couple of players that we are trying to sell, but doesn't look like they're going to go. And now the important things, the incoming signings. So we started off with Marlon Sellers on a free transfer from Leicester. He's just a youngster that we've managed to bring through. The same goes for Mark McCormack, coming in on a free from Aston Villa, just as a potential good player who we might be able to sell for a little bit of profit in the future. Next up, we had Ethan Pinnock, who's come in from Brentford for £205,000. This was one that my director of football actually found, but he looked very good, so we've, we've bought him in. Uh, Centre-back. Let's have a quick look at how he did for Brentford last year. Only played one game for them. Did get a 7 rating. But yeah, he's kind of fallen out of favour at Brentford, but hopefully with us he can do a good job. But they had Derek Abu, a relatively young fullback. He can play either side, can cover centre-back if we need him to. He's more of a backup rather than a starter. £675,000 is quite an expensive signing for us from Salford, but hopefully he'll come good. We've then bought in a loan in Stefan Bedsitic. He's come in on loan from Liverpool as a right-back slash centre-back. We're mostly using him at right-back, if I'm being honest. Looks very good. Lots of potential, which we're probably not going to see the benefit of. But he's come in as a very good player to come in and do a job for us. Then we have a left-back in Thomas Galvez. He came in from Aston Villa, 325000 He's only two star at the moment, but lots of potential. And I feel like having a young left back, I feel like he's going to really push on this year. We would hope so, at least, because we need him to. Next, we had Christian Walton. We needed to replace Sidney Salo after we agreed the sale for him. 425000 for him coming in from Ipswich Town, who I believe... Had just been relegated. However, I kind of started the process of signing him prior to the end of the previous season. So I had a look. His save percentage was pretty good. I can't remember exactly what it was. But I feel like out of the three relegated teams, he was the one that was the best keeper. We bought Joel Idaho to us on a full-term contract. He was on loan, obviously, last year from Arsenal. Now we've signed him on a permanent contract. The same goes for Tyler Fredrickson. He was at Manchester United. We bought, we did pay for Fredrickson, £105,000. But again, lots of potential. Already a pretty good player. He did a good job for us last year for the most part of the season. He had a couple of injuries which prevented him making some appearances. But overall, I think he'll be a good signing. A free transfer from Arsenal again in Miguel Aziz. He's a central midfielder. Lots of potential, pretty good already. And centre mid was one of the main things that I wanted to improve because really it was Devoy, Davis, Bakinson. And then we were into more of the defensive players. So he's more of an attacking centre midfielder for us. We then went all out and bought in McNeely. Chelsea did sign him to a new contract. However, we went and paid £450,000 in order to bring him in because the season he had for us last year, I know it says 12 goals, but... He was very good for us, and I can only see him improving alongside Harrit this year. And our final signing at this stage is Nicolas Sanchez, a holding midfielder, coming from Southampton. He's on loan, so no worries there. Only 22 years old, looks a phenomenal player, and he had a very good season on loan at Blackpool last year. So we're hoping he can carry that into the championship with ourselves. We did also release Brannigan. Kean Spence and Jake Brown at the end of last season, as well as Billy Bowden, who actually retired. But a few players that left us on freeze. With Brannigan, he wouldn't sign a new contract. He wouldn't even discuss one. And 
I feel like we've managed to replace him adequately, so I'm not sure he's going to be too big of a loss. So with that all said and done, it's time to jump into our first game of the season against Stoke. In the EFL Cup, we have drawn Colchester there in League 2, so you would hope we can pick up a good result against them. Let's go and see how we're lining up. So we have Lewis in goal to start the new season. Walton is on the bench just because Lewis has had the slightly better pre-season. Bajcetic is at right back. Pinnock, Finlay and Williams as the back four. Sanchez is holding the field with Bakinson and Aziz in front of him. Brown on the right, McNeely on the left and Harrit up front. I do feel that is our strongest like front three, but it's been so long since we've been able to have them all together because of Brown broke his ankle and then when he came back, McNeely broke his arm. So it's nice to start the season with what I feel is our strongest front three and potentially our strongest team overall anyway. Pinnock on the ball here plays it out to Aziz and out to Williams at left back. We're 14 minutes gone into our championship rebirth. Obviously, Oxford getting straight back into the league and Harrit was there at the near post from McNeely. Didn't quite manage to get on target though. Hyam with a free kick at the back, plays it across to Herstoff and then forward to Timon. Switches it out to the right-hand side for Stoke and Tezco is forced back to Atebo. At the moment, the stats of the game, we're actually slightly bettering Stoke, which is very nice to see. And hopefully we can make that pay. And James is in and score. It's Dan James, oh my goodness. Dan James has just been assisted by Will Hughes and Stoke lead. Manu Garcia sends the ball in and at the far post, Yam scores to put Stoke 2 0 up. We'd started strong and it's gone a bit wrong now. So we reach half time 2 0 down. Admittedly, Stoke are predicted to finish like just outside the playoffs, so they are a pretty good team. However, didn't expect to find ourselves 2 1 down. I think what we might try is just swap into a direct counter attack and see if that works better for us as a team hopefully we might see that pay off brown with a free kick just outside the area goes for goal hits the bar very nearly gets one back for us Sham on the ball for oxford at the back we're going to be making a couple of changes after this highlight however wilmot bringing the ball forward a tabo over the top towards dan james and lewis saves this one and as promised, we are going to make our changes. Harrett has not got going in this game at all. So we're going to bring Idaho on for him. Move McNeely up front. Idaho will play on the right. Brown on the left. And we'll also bring Fredrickson on for Finley just because of that booking. We don't want an early red card in this season. Herstoff with a free kick for Stoke. And then it's back to him and across to Sham. At this stage of the game, I think it's... A very big ask for us to get anything out of it. It just got even bigger. 3 0. And unfortunately, oh no, he was offside. However, I still maintain it's going to be very difficult for us to do anything in this game. Devoy is going to go on for Aziz in midfield. And Abu will come on for Stefan at right back. I think we'll leave it there. Manquilo is on the ball at right back. Well, say right back. He's basically on the right wing for Stoke here. And Manu Garcia. Trying to get a turn, not able to do so. Manquillo inside to Tezgel and back to the wing. Chance for a cross here, puts it into the box and Pinox knocked it into his own net. The player that I said was going to come in and do a really good job for us. So a little bit of a reality check for us as we return to life in the championship. Losing 3-0 to Stoke, who, to be fair, we, we matched them in the actual game. They just took their chances a lot better than us. So definitely things for us to go away and work on. But hopefully we can bounce back. But that bounce back will not be today because we are going to go away and play for a little bit of the season. My first thought is aiming for the EFL third round as long as we get there. Obviously we didn't get there last year. So hopefully that would be a nice place for us to come back. We've got Colchester and Bolton in these next two games a League 2 team and a team that came up from League 1 with us so should be a bit more our level and I'm hoping that can allow us to pick up two wins build some confidence in the team and then we can perhaps go on a little bit of a run if you have enjoyed that please do leave a like down below let me know what you think we can achieve this season with the signings that I've made there subscribe if you are enjoying the content and thank you very much for watching